Hi, I'm Dr. Christine Doherty. Today I'm going to talk a bit about the FODMAPS diet, or fructose intolerance, which is one of the real hidden culprits that's underdiagnosed that can cause a lot of irritable bowel symptoms. I consider generally one of the things that tips me off that a patient may have um, fructose intolerance is that they have a lot of gas and bloating. I consider that requisite. <laughs> um, Sometimes they'll have constipation, sometimes they'll have diarrhea, sometimes it'll just be the gas and bloating. Typically, a lot of the patients I see are already gluten-free or we've identified their food allergies, but they still just aren't getting better. Um, so this is one of the hidden culprits. And it's a lot like lactose intolerance in that it's an enzyme deficiency. So um, like lactose intolerance, it's the sugars that are the problem. And FODMAPS, as I mentioned, is the diet that is used to kind of diagnose to some extent, although there is a test that will help with this, um, but it is the treatment. Unlike lactose intolerance, there isn't a pill currently for digesting fructose. So you really just have to adhere to a low fructose diet. Every patient has an individual tolerance for fructose. So some people will be able to eat a fair amount of it and not have symptoms and other people can only have tiny amounts or they'll get a lot of those symptoms that I mentioned. The FODMAP stands for fructo oligosaccharides, monosaccharides, disaccharides, and polyols, <laughs> which is just a fancy word for the types of short chain carbohydrates or types of sugars that the body can have a hard time breaking down if you have this specific issue. So I usually start by eliminating the high fructose foods. Um, which include things like apples, peaches, pears, honey, asparagus, watermelon, agave syrup, uh, lychee fruit, um, some of the anything with high fructose corn syrup in it, anything that's concentrated like dried fruit, things like that. Mangoes are high. So usually I start with that. A lot of times I use that diet diagnostically to see, and often people I find respond within three to four days of eliminating those high fructose foods. And the, their symptoms just improve dramatically. As I mentioned, there is a test for this. It's actually a breath test, just like lactose intolerance, but instead of drinking a solution of lactose, you drink a solution of fructose, and then you breathe into a bag. And, and some uh, gastrointestinal doctor's offices will have um, machines that will do the breath analysis, but otherwise there are home kits that you can do, and will tell you pretty accurately whether you have an issue digesting these sugars. Unfortunately, won't tell you the individual tolerance that you have to find out by experimenting with the diet. There is so the fr foods I mentioned so far are the ones high in fructose. Now uh, I know I mentioned the other sugars that are part of the FODMAPS diet. So interestingly, fructans is in the next level. If people feel better when they do the first level of elimination of the fructose, but they're still not there. Then we go to the next level, which is the fructans, which includes things like garlic, onions, wheat, barley. So some of those foods can then be problematic um, digestively. And again, this isn't an immune problem. It's not like an allergy, but I think it is one of the reasons a lot of people react badly to gluten or think it's gluten when really it actually may be the fructan in the wheat products that they can't tolerate. Now, polyols are ones that I find that pretty much most people who have this issue don't tolerate well at all. And they're um, the fake sugars like uh, xylitol, maltolol, um, so you find them a lot in gum. So I found that to be a huge issue for people who have this problem. They can't chew, especially sugar-free gum, uh, or they'll get horrible gastrointestinal symptoms. And a lot of patients who have fructose intolerance may also have other conditions, and especially what I see in my practice are other autoimmune conditions. As I mentioned, it is one of the um, things that's associated with celiac, and often I see people who are gluten-free. And um, this can help if they don't feel completely better when they eliminate the gluten, they still have residual gastrointestinal symptoms. It can also cause malabsorption and affect the nutritional status. So supplementing with especially a supplement that does not contain fructose is useful. And as I mentioned, the, the treatment is the diet. So it comes down to really being um, 
a detective and trying to figure out how much of these things you can have. What I find is sort of counterintuitive and interesting about this is that foods like asparagus can be highly problematic, but people can eat things like bananas and strawberries, and those actually are low fructose foods. So you would, I would have thought that sweet, more sweet equals more fr sugar, but it actually doesn't work that way at all. So. Um, I encourage you to look into this if you have residual symptoms or if you have patients who have residual symptoms, uh, if you're a doctor, and find out more about it. I hope this is helpful for you. Thanks.